Well, g'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to do a quick run through of the Viking Pro Push Reload, how I've got it set up, and also a quick look at the gear that I use. So, stay tuned. I've got a couple of top tips that you may not have thought of that will certainly help you out on the water. Let's get into it. So we'll start off here with the trolley that I use to get the kayak from the car down to the water and vice versa. So this is the Sea Tug trolley and it's got the sand track wheels on there. Super easy to use, easy to chuck the kayak on it. Uh, it's super sturdy, it's got a cam locking system, it gets this really nice and tight so there's no issues with the kayak moving around on the trolley. And the best thing about the Sea Tug that I like is that it can fit into the front hatch up there. So I'll quickly show you uh, taking the kayak off of the trolley and stowing the trolley up in the front hatch. So to take the trolley off, all we do is loosen the cam lock. Put that down there. Take that over this side. And I just come like this. Lift it off, happy day. Now to break the trolley down, easy as. These just come out of here like that. So on the sides, got little locking pins, click that up, wheel comes off. Same on the other side, wheel comes off. So obviously I take this apart once I get down to the water. Once the trolley's disassembled, open up the front hatch. wheels in first Put this in and then these slide in there close the hatch up We're away. Oh, nice and tight. Happy days. So just before we go any further in the video, I'd just like to say this isn't going to be a video going over the features of the reload, but rather how I've got it set up and looking at the gear that I use. So now that we've got that cleared up, we will move on, make our way up the kayak and go over how I've got things set up. Right, so you've seen the front hatch. Heaps of storage in there, happy days, that's where the sea tug goes. Uh, we'll move on to the tackle pod. So up the front we've got two HD star ports. On the right hand side I've got a rod holder mounted, which I never use, it's basically just there in case I need it. The only time I've ever used it is when I've brought four rods out with me. Pretty excessive, but yeah, otherwise it just sits there and looks pretty. On the left hand mount I've got my main camera boom. Uh, this is what I use to film most of my fishing videos with. So if you're not familiar with star ports, they're made by a company called Railblazer. And they're real easy to attach to your kayak, your boat, anything really. They've got hundreds of attachments. Simply just clicks in, clicks out. Um, if there's an attachment that you think you need on the water, I guarantee that Railblazer has it made. Like I say, real easy to install. Uh, the reload comes with a bunch of them. These are standard on the reload tackle pod. Next up, we've got the fish finder. I use a pretty basic fish finder setup. I don't generally use it for finding fish, but more so for tracking where I am, 
uh, tracking my drift speed, checking the water temperature and finding uh, contours and change of depth in the water. So this is just a Lowrance Hook Reveal 5. Pretty basic, pretty cheap, a couple hundred bucks. And we've got a Burley Pro sun visor on there just to help keep the glare off when we're on the water. Up here is where I keep my soft baits. This is the Gulp uh, soft bait tub. Fits in here really nicely. Uh, the elastic holds it down, doesn't move around. Uh, got a whole bunch of soft baits in there. Obviously those of you who watch the channel know that the all time best soft bait is the bruised banana jerk shad. In terms of what I keep inside the tackle pod, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, VHF radio, usually clipped to my uh, PFD. I've got a survival kit in here, just a basic Katmandu survival kit. You never know when you might need it. Bunch of leader. Uh, I've got 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, depending on what kind of fishing I'm doing. Uh, I've got a filleting knife in here, just in case I ever have the urge to say catch a car wire, fill it up some slabs and chuck some fresh baits in. Still yet to do that, but when I did boat fishing, I did love a good bait burley session. A uh, little bait knife. Usually just slide that in there. Easy as doesn't move around. Easy to get to. Use that for eking fish and gutting them. A little measure for the fish. Uh, generally, if I have to measure it, then it's too small, so it doesn't really get used, but just in case. Pliers, split ring pliers, cutting line, changing jigs, stuff like that. Spare knife, should I lose mine overboard? And then two tackle boxes. Uh, these are the Ocean Angler tackle boxes. They make a range of sizes. And the thing I like about these is number one, they fit nicely inside the tackle pod. Number two, it's got this waterproof seal around the outside. I've never had any problems getting water in there. So this one is mainly for my soft baits. It's got jig heads, um, some sliders and whatnot. This is the one I use most. And this one here, got more sliders, a couple of other types of jigs. Um, bigger jigs for kingies if uh, I'm going out targeting those, but you'll obviously set your uh, tackle boxes up for whatever type of fishing you're doing. And that's all I keep in the tackle pod, other than the battery uh, for the sounder. For those of you who don't know, uh, these tackle pods are completely removable. The sounder, the transducer, the battery, everything is self-contained in here. Makes it super easy for getting prepped the night before or the morning of or going for a fish. So that's one reason why I love biking kayaks. Right, moving our way up the kayak. Paddle, it's just the basic uh, propels paddle that you get standard with the kayak. I don't often do huge miles on the water, so I haven't found the need to upgrade to a carbon fibre or anything. Uh, this does the job for me. And as you can see, tethered on with a leash. Leash it or lose it. I've been on the water once before when I was much younger. Uh, my paddle came off the side, the bungee gave way, and I only realised when it was about 100 metres away, so I had to go for a swim and get my paddle. So, always leash it. Uh, same with the rods. The leashes that I use, I think these are just rob fort. This is a rob fort leash. Uh, anything will do, just make sure your gear is attached. Once again, the seat that I use is just a standard uh, propel seat that comes with the kayak. The Viking Reload has the option of fitting a hurricane seat. I've heard amazing things about them. I'd love to try one out. They're about 300 bucks, so pretty, pretty dear for a little foam seat, but I hear they're super comfortable and people really rate them. I don't have any issues with this. You can see I've got it pulled quite far forward. It keeps me nice and upright and gives me a lot of support when I'm pedaling so I can focus on using my core to pedal rather than using my arms. Running along the side here, I've got my running rig. I use that for my sea anchor. So when I'm on the water, I keep my sea anchor in this hatch to 
to the rear left hand side of me super easy to get to and I'm in the water unfold chuck it out and obviously you can move it forwards or backwards however you like I always have mine out the back makes sense to me and then when you're done wind it in shove it back in there carry on so the drift anchor that I use once again, a, a Rob Fort drift anchor. And the thing that I really like about this is a little foam attachment here. So when you're in the water, if you're trying to pull your, your drift chute in like a giant parachute, it creates heaps of drag, really hard to do. But with this, if you just grab this, it just closes the whole thing up like this. It comes out easy as. All right, onto the good stuff. So the rods that I use, and the reels that I use and what I use them for. My main setup is this one here. Uh, this is an Ocean Angler Mega Wave Pro soft bait rod, eight foot six, so pretty big for a kayak, but once you get used to it, you'll never go back. Um, I've tried quite a few soft bait rods in the past, and this one I find I have such a good hookup rate. Uh, it's real sensitive and I keep fish on. I used to drop a lot of fish with other rods, but yeah, highly rate this rod. And that's paired with a Shimano Stratic 4000. It's got 15 pound braid on here, and I usually use 20 pound leader. And I've upgraded the knob to a uh, Gomexis knob. It's just a little bit bigger in the hand, easier to use, I find. Alright, moving on to the next one. This is like my backup soft bait rod. Uh, I don't often use it, but I take it with me just in case. It's a pretty cheap setup. Uh, this is the Shimano Sedona reel. Uh, once again, 15 pound braid on there. Use 20 pound leader for it. Uh, also upgraded the knob on this one. Super handy. And it's paired with the Abu Garcia Veritas 4.0. Uh, very cheap rod. Heard a lot of people rave about it. Um, I'm not a huge fan, really. I mean, I don't use it a lot. I did give it a good go at the beginning to see what the rave was about, but um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. I, like after, like I said, after using my Ocean Angler Mega Wave Pro, um, in my opinion, nothing else comes close. But it's good to have this on the water. I'll often have like a, a small soft bait on this and a big one on this, or vice versa, so I don't have to keep switching soft baits and jig heads around. But yeah, it does the job. It's a good backup. Now, top tip number one. So, if your soft bait rod doesn't have a little hook to put your jig head in, what I've done here, put two cable ties, one wrapped around the rod completely, and the other one I've left a little loop in there. So, when I'm out fishing, rather than hooking the, the jig head to the reel and potentially scratching it, I can just put the, the jig head in there. Keeps it nice and secure. Happy days. Alright, so the last setup that I take with me on the water is my slow jig slash slider setup. Mainly used for sliders. I used to fish sliders all the time before I got into soft baiting. Uh, the main reason for that is just because they're so easy. You literally drop them to the bottom, slow wind, and nothing else. So the reel for this one is a Daiwa Saltus 15H. I did want the Saltiga 10H, but yeah, a bit out of my price range, so uh, this is a close second and really happy with the reel, haven't had any issues with it. This is spooled with 30 pound braid, I think, so pretty heavy and usually use like 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound litre, whatever I'm feeling. And it's paired with the uh, Ocean Angler Powerflex Bender. Pretty sure this rod is specifically designed for sliders, which is why I got it. As with the soft bait rods, I've tried uh, multiple slider rods as well, and this one just outshines the rest, I reckon. I'm in no way affiliated with Ocean Angler or any of their products, but uh, I do really rate their, their gear. And I think this rod and the soft bait rod are about 250 bucks a piece, so pretty cheap for what you get. Like, the quality is amazing, and they fish really, really well. Alright, and then the last rod holder at the back here got my landing net, it's easy to grab from the seat, um, right on the left hand, reach around, get the net, happy as. 
as you see, everything's leashed on. You don't want to lose anything on the water. So the reload has two HD star ports at the back as well. I use the one on the right hand side for my second camera here. Don't often use this camera. Uh, I quite often forget that it's there, but yeah, either way, two star ports at the back, which I use uh, mainly for mounting cameras. All right, top tip number two. So these little nylon eyes that come on the kayak, they get pretty crowded when you're putting rod leashes on there. I think you can only fit one, maybe two. So what I've done, so I've just installed these stainless steel rings. So now I can fit look, two rod leashes, a seat, room for more if I need to. So I've got it there, there, and also where my seat attaches up the front. I've got one there, and I've got one there. These rings cost about two bucks each from Marine Deals and make your life way easier when you're setting up. All right, so for the rear storage well, I've opted for the chill pod. For me, the reasons I use this, easy as to just um, put in and remove whenever I go fishing. Easy to access at the back. I can easily turn around, chuck a fish in, get a fish out if I need to gut it or whatever. Easy to clean and keeps the fish cold for me. I have heard people complain about the chill pods saying that they're difficult to clean and that it doesn't keep the fish cold. Uh, certainly not difficult to clean. If anything, it's easier than a fish bag or something because you just blast it out, give it a wipe if you need to. It's got a bung in there so you can drain the water. Uh, in terms of keeping fish cold, um, usually when I'm on the water, I get on the water before the sun's up and I'm normally off the water by about 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. I like to uh, fish early mornings. I find that's when the fish are biting the most. So I've never really fished the heat of the day in this. So maybe if you are fishing over the hottest part of the day, it, it might struggle to keep fish cold. But for me, I've never had any issues with it. And what I use to keep fish cold in there, just those blue chili blocks that you put in chili bins. I just put three or four of those uh, one liter ones in there. They're reusable. Uh, and like I say, it keeps the fish cold for me, so yeah, and I just think it looks cool, eh? It matches the whole look of the kayak, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. Alright, last piece of the puzzle here in terms of equipment that I use on the reload is the Railblazer visibility kit. This is a solid pole uh, with a flag mounted at the top, but the main reason I use this rather than the little uh, whippy snippy flag that a lot of people use is because it has a visibility light on the top and as I mentioned previously I do most of my fishing in the morning I'm generally on the water before the sun's up while it's dark so it's imperative that I can be seen by other traffic on the water hence why I use this with the light on top the light's super bright um, see it from miles away so yeah safety's paramount on the water which is why I use this one I had someone ask me the other day um, how do I turn the light off once the sun comes up? I don't. Uh, this just has three AA batteries, I believe. So having rechargeable batteries is your friend there. Well, that pretty much wraps up the walkthrough of the kayak, how I've got it set up and the gear that I use. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll quickly show you some of the clothing and other accessories that I use on the water. All right, the first thing we'll start off with is my PFD, personal flotation device. This is a BLA 50. Uh, so it looks like from the front It's got a couple of storage pockets here with zips which I find really handy But the big thing that I like about this is that it's got room at the back for a bladder So I've got a three litre camel back in here Which means I can just have a sip of water whenever I want I don't have to muck around getting a water bottle or anything like that Also keep a safety whistle clipped to the top here should I ever get in trouble and need to use that and my VHF radio clips into here. Once again, cable ties coming through for the win. Uh, there were no clips on here big enough for me to clip the radio in, so I've just put a cable tie in there and the radio sits nice and snug in there. In terms of gloves, I use shark skin gloves. They are super comfortable, super warm. Uh, these have the thumb and the first two fingers missing, which make it easy to tie knots and deal with tackle on the water. Inside, it's like a like a woolen material. 
So like I say, they're super, super warm. The quality of them is really good. The last pair that I had, I used for a good three years straight. Absolutely abused them. So yeah, shark skin gloves. I think they're about 60 bucks or something, but well worth it. They're awesome. Also keeps your hands from getting blisters or whatever when you're paddling. In terms of dry pants, normally use these in the winter. If it's summertime, I'll just wear stubbies or something. Uh, these are Razdex dry pants, about 130 bucks, I think. Uh, they're awesome, great quality and great company to deal with. It's got adjustable Velcro waist straps. Uh, yeah, these are pretty dirty. I just give them a quick rinse down. I don't think you're meant to machine wash them. I think it'll affect the, the waterproofness. So yeah, I just give them a spray down once I'm done. So they keeps a bit of life in them, you know, in terms of fish guts, blood, all that good stuff. In terms of footwear on the water, I usually use these Cressy booties. I used to use other ones which just had like the neoprene bottoms on them, but I found that if you're using the rudders lots, it can get a bit sore on the feet. So these ones have like a solid bottom on them. Uh, nice zip on the side so it's easy to get them off and on. And these are five mil. These are about 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Um, keeps your feet warm too if it is cold. Really good to use. I really rate these ones. And lastly, you quite often see me wearing this like, neck buff, whatever it is. Uh, this is just an ocean angler one. Um, use it mainly for sun, but if it gets windy as well and you're out on the water for a while, the wind can drive you nuts. So good for covering your neck, keeping protected from the sun or covering your whole face. Um, if I am fishing in hot weather, then I'll always put sun cream on, use this, try and protect myself from the elements as much as possible. Uh, just makes it more pleasant on the water. And lastly, good pair of sunnies, uh, essential on the water. Uh, get a polarized lens, helps you cut through the glare and actually see into the water. The reflection of the sun off the water can actually really damage your eyes, so um, if you're not using them for comfort, then use them for safety, because if you spend long amounts of time on the water, you don't want to damage your eyes. And you also always see me wearing a hat when I'm on the water. Once again, just protect yourself, safety first. Keep safe on the water. I think I've pretty much covered everything that I want to cover in terms of what I use on the kayak, where I put things, how I've got things set up. Uh, if I have missed something, I'll cover it in a later video, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, any further questions on my setup, or you want any advice, recommendations, then please leave a comment below. Uh, I've got a few more videos in the works that aren't directly fishing related, more so uh, safety on the water, um, and videos for beginner kayak fishermen who are getting into the sport. I know when I started fishing I had heaps of questions and there weren't a lot of videos around that gave me the answers that I wanted so I'm going to try making more videos along those lines to help people out to get into the sport of kayak fishing. It's an awesome community to be a part of so if I can help people in any way possible then uh, that's a good thing. So like I said if you've got any further questions leave a comment below uh, if you're not subscribed already, then please subscribe. Uh, it helps me out massively. I don't make money or anything from YouTube. I've obviously got a pretty small uh, fan base. But obviously the aim one day is to get enough um, people watching the channel to make something, you know. But if anything, I just love making videos and sharing my experiences with you guys. So uh, that's it from me. And we'll see you in the next video. Kakite.